are these people? This is really going to get heavy, folks. I'm just warning you now. Trigger warning, content warning. This is going to be about Rafa and what they plan to do. But we're going to start with my brother, Rich. Quote, my ancestors lived here 3,000 years ago, so that means I've got a license to kill and take my land by force. Zero proof needed. That's what the Israeli says, of course. The Palestinian says, this is my house. Me, my grandparents, grandparents, great-grandparents all grew up here. They have to go to a refugee camp. Don't fight back or you're a terrorist. Just keep in mind that this is the framing that this is all coming from. This is Rafa that the IOF is planning, preparing to enter. And these small squares are the tents of the displaced Palestinians. They're housing more than a million Israeli displaced Palestinians. The reality on the ground is much worse. And there's I've got more. I haven't made it through this one. Yet. Okay. This is a child who recognizes his father. Don't turn away. This is why they're protesting. It's not about Judaism. It's about this. It's about this. And it's about to get much worse. This is from the cradle. Three days ago, Egypt holds secret intel meeting with Israel on Rafa. They have been briefed on and is involved in Israeli plans to e evacuate Rafa citizens into Han Yunus, which they haven't fucking stopped bombing. And they destroyed the hospital. And oh yeah, they just bulldozed the hospital and found bodies that were handcuffed. Mm -hmm. yep, we heard Don't that. turn away. Don't turn away. You better fucking look. Because this is being done in our names, folks. I can't go into reader mode. Okay. Top Israeli and Egyptian officials held a secret meeting in Cairo on 24th April, aimed at discussing Tel Aviv's plans for an invasion of Gaza's southernmost city in Rafa. Three, three senior Israeli officials told Axios on Wednesday that Shin Bet Chief Ronan Barr and Israeli Army Chief Erzi Halevi meet, uh, met with the head of the Egyptian intelligence, Abbas Kamel, and Egypt's Army Chief Osama Askar. The report came the same day that an, Israel, that an Israeli defense official said that Israel will launch the operation in Rafah as soon as it gets government approval. Israel is moving ahead with the operation, a spokesman for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, but gave no specific time frame. They better bring this fucker up on charges with the ICC, like now, now, today. Not that that will do anything. I see J charges, genocide, murder, right now. Yeah, they already, I mean, they no, technically they, already did. They not, were supposed to wait for a month and then get stuff back. That hasn't happened at all. Like, that thing doesn't have any power. It has is, some, but it's mainly like, you know, like, symbolic in nature, mainly. Israel. Oh, sure is developing a plan to evacuate civilians from the desperately overcrowded city. Egypt has expressed concern over the possibility of an influx of Palestinian refugees entering its territory once Rafah has attacked, 
and has vowed not to allow any mass displacement of Gazans into its Sinai desert, which is what Bibi's plan has been the entire time. We've reported on that since the October. Entire time. Push them into the Sinai. Now, Egypt has already built a barrier a mile and a half in, basically accounting for this. The IMF has already said that they're willing to wipe out and forgive debt from Egypt if they're willing to accept them. It's only a matter of time. This is all po positioning, posturing, and narrative bullshit. That's what's going to happen to these people. The ones who aren't mm -hmm. exterminated by the bombs that hit Rafa and Khan Yunus. After they have to run, they ran all the way for their lives down to Rafa, and now they're going to be bombed out of Rafa back to Kanye. Washington has repeatedly called on Israel to ensure the safe evacuation of civilians from Rafa, where military operations pose the threat of severe humanitarian catastrophe. Quote, everyone is waiting for Netanyahu's directive to start evacuating the civilian population from Rafa. Parked at his desk, needs to resolve the matter with both the Americans and the Egyptians, unquote, one of the Israeli officials told Axios. Oh, he's got a plan to resolve the matter. U.S. and Israeli officials held a virtual meeting last week to discuss plans for Rafa. I hope they're not the same kind of plans that they had for Gaza. Originally, waterfront property that they're already selling and bulldozing, and using the bones and the buildings from the destroyed buildings that they blew up in order to build the new ones. Gross. U.S. and Israeli officials, like we said, held a virtual meeting. The decision to launch the operation is conditions-based and not time-based and connected to the humanitarian situation on the ground. Tel Aviv emphasized to Washington during the meeting, according course, to the U.S. officials. Yeah, by the way, Bel Tel Aviv burned down another big storage warehouse of all of the U.N. humanitarian supplies that are actually coming in. They're being bombed. The Wall Street Journal reported on April 23rd, citing Egyptian officials, that Israel's evacuation plans for Rafah are near complete. <laughs> The plan will take two to three weeks and will be carried out in cooperation with Washington, Cairo, and other Arab states, including the UAE. If they don't just bomb the whole fucking place, which is my guessing what they're actually going to do. Egyptian forces have been deployed in the northern Sinai and along the Gaza border and are at, quote, full readiness. I don't see any potential of a shooting solution starting there, right? now. After being briefed by Israel... Um, on plans for Rafa, Al Arabi Al Jadid reported on April 18th. Oh, got a super chat out of Willie Bragg. Thank you. Calling those anti Semitic for criticizing Israel would be like calling people Islamophobic for criticizing Saudi Arabia for what they did to Yemen. Yes. Thank you, Willie. Thanks, th thanks for the super chat. Appreciate that. Israel's evacuation plan involves moving Rafah's civilian population upwards towards the southern city of Khan Yunus, as well as other areas of the Strip, report states, adding that shelters with tents, food supplies, and medical facilities will be set up. So they're not even prepared for this now. Recently published satellite images show a large tent compound in Khan Yunus and Israeli troop gatherings at army bases and outposts near the Strip signaling that the invasion of Rafa may be imminent. But they're not the only ones that are predicting this. <clears throat> but just in case you had any question as to what their plans might actually be, here's their defense minister, Zazel Smotrich, another piece of shit. Far right minister condemns indirect negotiations with Hamas and calls for their, their assassination across the globe. He calls for a complete destruct destruction of Gaza instead of truce talks. Just in case anybody has any questions as to what Israel is planning to do and says they want peace, and if Hamas laid their weapons down, then Israel would too. No, they wouldn't. 
That is a lie, that- and you are perpetrating propaganda. And again, I said Middle East Eye. In photo. <clears throat> and that photo looks like he's using those kids to shoot shield. Why would he use Jewish kids to shield like that? That's terrible. Don't do that. I think those are his kids, Bad. maybe. But. Yes, Ian. Because Asbel Smotrich called for the complete destruction of the Gaza Strip as he hit out truce trucks between the government and Hamas. And again, this was on April 26th. This is two days ago. This is not like months and years and ages ago. This is two days ago. This is what they want. This is seven and a half months after murdering an entire generation. Displacing surgeries without fucking anesthesia, amputations, jailing thousands after murdering tens of thousands and injuring and... Mm-hmm. Tell me how religion is so yep. great, folks. But this isn't really being done in the name of religion, we know. This is being done in the name of land theft mm-hmm. and resource theft. Writing on X, formerly known as Twitter, of course, we will always call it Twitter. Smotrich said negotiating with Hamas was irresponsible and members of the group should be killed instead. And of course, that's allowed on Twitter because Israelis and Zionists are allowed to say whatever they want. Quote, the time has come for the Mossad to return to doing what it was trained to do, to eliminate the heads of Hamas all over the world and not in negotiations that are conducted irresponsibly and harm Israel's security. No, Mossad's a little busy infiltrating college campuses and spraying skunk on students all over the country. Like at Columbia. Oh, yeah, that happened three weeks before any of this shit, by the way. Mm -hmm. People don't remember that that was one of the escalations that happened on that campus that led to these people camping out. And protesting. Yep. Motrich says that with Hamas from now on, we should only talk with shells and bombs. He said Israel needed to attack Rafa as fast and strongly as possible, then continue with the strip until it's complete destruction. So tell me how they want a two-state solution. Tell me how they're willing to negotiate and come to the table. Tell me how peaceful these people are. Give me a break. Look at the gaslight. Not only that, they're claiming to represent Jews worldwide, and it's a disgrace. They don't speak for me. Mm-hmm. They don't speak for a Goose lot of Jews, thankfully. No, no, not tonight. Israeli media reported on Wednesday that a ground invasion of southern <laughs> Rafa appeared imminent. Preparations being put in place to expel tens of thousands of displaced Palestinians who are crowded into the city already. The incursion into Rafa, where a million displaced Palestinians are sheltering in tents and makeshift camps, will happen very soon according to a report in the newspaper Israel Hayom. That means today, by the way. Oh, someone remembers their, their Torah lessons. Yeah, somebody went to Hebrew school. Somebody was bar mitzvah. <laughs> somebody takes his kids to fucking temple still, and somebody was fucking put on tefillin at the wall, all right? I'm not a fucking guy that doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about here. This is bullshit. Sometimes it's, it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. No, it's always shit. <laughs> Secular states should not exist. Fight me. My man. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office and an Israeli military spokesman's office did not immediately comment on the reports. Surprise, surprise. Israeli sources told Reuters on Wednesday that Israel had procured tens of thousands of tents to evacuate Palestinian civilians from Rafah over the coming weeks. Yeah, thanks for that. After you fucking blew up their houses, why? <laughs> why? They li- oh, they escalated. Mm-hmm. Palestinians have said that nowhere is safe from Israeli bombardment in the besieged Gaza Strip since Israel's yes, and since their bombardment on Gaza. It's not even a war on Gaza. It's an assault on Gaza. It's a destruction. It's a massacre on Gaza. Began in October. It's an ethnic cleansing in Gaza. Boy, that escalated quickly. The Israeli military has consistently bombed so-called safe zones after it told Palestinians to evacuate. Of course it has. And then they turn around and say that Hamas yep. is shooting them. Huh? <laughs> Fuck you. Stop yeah. fucking lying. That's right. More than 34,300 Palestinians. And we know that number stopped be really counting in December. So a lot more than that are dead. Mm-hmm. Mostly women and children have been killed. Over 77,000 have been wounded in Israel's military campaign since October. 
Middle East Eye is calling it as they see it, and I support them. And I also support Indie Media Award honoree Mondo Weiss, big time. Mitchell Plitnik lays it out. And just reading this headline just made me... Ugh, made me want to cry. The Rafa invasion will be catastrophic. The impending Rafa invasion will be even worse than anything we've seen so far, and the U.S. is just going to watch it happen. Support Mondo Weiss, support independent media. We need it more than ever. Here's another shot of some of camps. APA images. <laughs> look at it, everyone. But doesn't that look like we did this? Perfect. We're doing this. Condo, like condo real estate for Israel. I mean, it must be. It, it will be after they clear them out because that's their plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if and if there was a, you know, native burial grounds are not where you should be building your sky rise apartment. I'm just saying. But, with know. the page seeming to have at least temporarily turned on a direct confrontation between Israel and Iran, the promised Israeli invasion of Rafah is once again looming large. On Friday, like we said, a high-level Egyptian delegation arrived in Israel to continue attempts to negotiate a ceasefire as Cairo's fears of a large exodus of Palestinians from Gaza into the Sinai have been renewed. Chances of success are damnized to say the least, of course. According to reports, Egypt's strategy is to try to first negotiate a release of some of the Israeli hostages still being held in Gaza in exchange for the release of Palestinian prisoners held by Israel, even, even though we know they'll never do that, or only at a 10 to 1 rate, at least. Another temporary pause in Israeli assault, which is bullshit too, which they don't really temporary pause ever, and an Israeli agreement to allow people to return to the areas they fled in the northern part of Gaza before they bomb them again, of course. Go back to your country. The idea is that if this agreement holds, it will delay the invasion of Rafa and hopefully lead to a permanent ceasefire. Yeah. Meanwhile, Israel has set up thousands the of tents. Of injustice. At the Hall of Injustice, Israel has set up thousands <laughs> of tents a few miles north of Rafa, to which they propose to evacuate, quote unquote, people ahead of their invasion. But let's be clear. This is not a humanitarian gesture, as Joe Biden and other American officials would present it. Israel isn't intending an evacuation. It's the forced displacement of people who have already been forcibly displaced, many of them multiple times and in flagrant violation of international humanitarian law, of which Israel is responsible for every single one of these people because they don't allow them a fully functioning government. They don't allow them to have freedom of movement. They don't allow them to have passports. They don't allow them to have electricity or clean running water, which all of those things are required by their UN charter. So why isn't that being revoked? We know why. Egypt, quite understandably, of course, is trying to prevent an attack on Rafa that's likely to force even more Palestinians across the border. Yeah, but it's also going to murder most of the people that are there. Mm -hmm. Since October, between 80 and 100,000 Palestinians have already fled Gaza into Egypt, according to the Palestinian Authority's ambassador to Egypt, Diab Alu. And I don't know how much I would necessarily believe the Palestinian Authority at this point, honestly. Because I have not heard very much out of them these last six months, seven months. And we mm -hmm. know that West Bank has been heavily attacked. They've been awfully quiet yeah. in comparison. All right. It's worth noting that many of those who've gotten out are in some way privileged, either because they have connections that could help them get out, or they had the means to pay some of the profiteers circling around Gaza and squeezing large sums of money out of desperate people. Gross. Most people in Gaza don't have such means, of course, which makes Egypt even more reluctant to see them across the border. Since the first 
brief pause in fighting when Hamas released 105 of the Israeli and foreign national hostages that it had kidnapped, ceasefire talks have been little more than political theater. Neither Israel nor Hamas is willing to concede what the other side is demanding as a minimum. Israel uses the hostages as rhetorical devices, but has been uninterested in stopping the slaughter in Gaza. Hamas, for its part, is unwilling to settle for less than an end to Israel's campaign, although it's willing to release a limited number of hostages in a prisoner exchange if Israel will allow Palestinians to return to their homes in the north, which Israel has been reluctant to do. Funny that. Ending the massacres in Gaza is the one and only thing that brings the hostages home. Israel and its supporters are uninterested in paying that price. They've also been uninterested in getting the hostages back at all, practically. Correct. You know, periodically. They've been filling tunnels with, with cement and water like they don't care you can turn off the uh, you know it's israeli sure um it's israeli hostages that like uh they tend to be really leery of israel coming to save them because they're usually not there to save them, you know so yep. yeah i mean it's just bullshit everywhere but periodically, um, talks are broken down, and each side blames the other, but the reality is that there's little room for an agreement. Hamas has no reason to agree to anything less than to an end to Israel's operations in Gaza. All Israel's offered is a short delay in its genocidal operation. The government of Benjamin Netanyahu has vowed to eliminate Hamas, a goal that is and always was impossible. And if you watch our coverage yeah. from a couple of weeks ago, there was a threat intelligence uh report to the president from the defense department that said you're never getting rid of hamas ever and not only that you just created an entire new generation of hamas by what you've done right here mm -hmm. while israel and its supporters talk a great deal about the release of the hostages they already have seen that ending the massacres in gaza is the one and only thing that brings the hostages home and they're uninterested in paying that price their crocodile tears for the hostages are playing increasingly thin with the hostages' families and large portions of the Israeli public who are seeing through this bullshit. Mm -hmm. Boss's insistence that Palestinians be allowed to return to the areas of the north from which they have been driven out is more practical, but that too will yield little in terms of relieving the plight of Gaza. Israeli forces have left very little standing in the areas from which Palestinians were forced out, and the north is a virtual wasteland where food and water are even scarcer than they are in Rafa. Except for down at the waterfront, where the trucks are building God only knows what right now on behalf of Israel and the Kushners, who are invested mm -hmm. in this. And they sold the land in Teaneck, New Jersey, and Toronto recently. Gross. This all means that if Egypt succeeds in finding an agreement on a delay in Israel's invasion of Rafah, all it will do is delay the inevitable because there is no common ground to unearth between Israel and Hamas on a permanent agreement. Ultimately, it comes down to the fact that Israel simply doesn't want one because a permanent agreement means an end to the military operations and actions by both sides. Well, there is no military action on Hamas's side because they're not a military. For Netanyahu, that means that if all the rest of the hostages die, even if the entire Middle East becomes un more unstable, even if the conflict widens, so be it. And then we've got, of course, the Hasbara offensive. What is Hasbara? Reef, can you lay out for the folks who don't know and are mm -hmm. not on Twitter what Hasbara is? I mean, from my understanding, it's... Israel propaganda arm. Pretty much. Yep. yep. I mean, any other details we need in that? It's basically, yes. Um, right. Well, it's, it, I think that it's the actual meaning is something very different, but the, the way it's been used is this is their, their lying propaganda that regularly gets debunked. But the thing is, is that you have to spend time debunking it. And at the moment it comes out, enough people believe it. And then don't hear the debunk 
But that's the narrative they now believe and go with going forward. I mean, it, it means explaining, right? In Hebrew? I, I believe so. In fact, Israel, with the aid of governments at all levels in both the United States and Europe, is desperately trying to use this period before they invade Rafah to shore up their support around the world. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his supporters in Congress from both parties, like we said, this is bipartisan, have scrambled to defend Israel using the now blunted weapon of characterizing protest against Israeli genocide as antiseptic. Yes. Um, yeah, gross. so Hezbollah also means to, like, justify. So, like, right. whether or not things are justified. Um, That's what it's supposedly explained so rationalizing genocide i also want to state here that there are as many christian zionists as there are jewish zionist supporters of israel for a totally different reason but their needs their, you know their, their interests align and they're not going to tell the jewish zionists exactly why they really believe it i mean i think they kind of know anyway but don't and they think that that's like kind of believing in santa claus which so is the whole fucking thing guys Mm -hmm. The desperation has been apparent in the quick turn to police violence to try to quell student protests, 10 soldiers and Nixon coming. I believe you put up a tweet yep. like that. Actions which have only so. served to spur more students and others across the United States to join in solidarity with the people of Gaza. I believe Laura Kay said that this earlier. summer, well, I hear the drumming. <laughs> You know, what better way to get people on the side of Israel than to beat up college students into liking Israel? Uh-huh. It's notable how much faster the police turn to how, to... how to? It's notable how much faster the turn to police violence has been this time around as compared to protests against the Iraq War or even the Vietnam War, where demonstrations on campuses had been going on for two years before police began using violence in 1967 at the University of Wisconsin. Yeah. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Since Wisconsin. the exchange of fire between Israel and Iran, Netanyahu has been hoping to recapture the false narrative that portrays Israel as a small country under siege. Others have gone even further, reviving and updating and old red baiting tactics by calling protesters agents of Hamas or of Iran. <clears throat> I think we get called that daily at this point. Yeah. This Hasbara offensive yeah. is meant to shore up support before the attack on Rafah, which is certain to be a calamity even by the standards of Israel's actions in Gaza for the past six months, but it faces obstacles. The ongoing recovery of more and more bodies and mass graves in, is in areas that Israel has moved on from in Gaza remains in the news, even though the shaded coverage of the campus protests is an open attempt to drown it out. Israel, of course, called yeah. the claims of mass graves and their soldiers used to dump Palestinian bodies in, into uh, baseless, but they're clearly anything but, because Hamas certainly has the ability to first zip-tie, handcuff doctors behind their backs and then blow up the hospital that they're working in. Oh, no, that was Israel that did that, and we watched them do it. Yeah. Yet, Israel, in, after that one statement, has done little so far to try to refute the facts. Instead, they are apparently hoping that driving up hysteria across raging anti-Semitism on college campuses, as we've seen the Karens out in full force today on Twitter, will do that work for them. The Biden like, administration, too. Go ahead. What, what's the Jewish version of Karen? You know? <laughs> well... I saw today Zarin said so was was coming out pretty mm. pretty solid and oof, that's <laughs> that was that that was pretty brutal. Mastermind Hour, thank you for reinforcing. There are actually more Christian Zionists than there are Jews in all of the world. That's right. Mm -hmm. And what do they believe? They believe that the Jews have to be in charge of Israel for Jesus to come back, and that all the Jews that don't convert to Christianity at that point will burn in hell. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Appreciate being the pawn in your little game, everybody. All right. The Biden administration, too, of course, is trying to help. <laughs> Biden himself baselessly and absurdly called the protests antiseptic. Never mind the outsized Jewish presence there. 
It is the latest in a long line of conventions and gaslights from both Biden and Netanyahu that simply fly in the face of obvious facts, but which have served for the, the brand. but which have served for the past six months to maintain just enough support for Israel's genocide, especially from the wealthy donor side, to keep it going and make sure that centers of power remain disciplined in their support for Israel. Look at the gaslight. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Look at the gaslight. <laughs> With at least some parts of the mainstream media fully supporting the deception that the campus protests are antiseptic, Israel may well believe that despite the ongoing negative public opinion, the atmosphere for a Rafa invasion is as good as it is likely to get in the foreseeable future. Wow. There are numerous signals that the invasion is imminent. Israel has called up reserves and publicly stated they're preparing for an attack. They've warned the Egyptians mm. that the current round of talks is the last chance for an agreement before an invasion. And Antony Blinken is due in Israel this coming week. In the past, Israel has taken action very shortly after Blinken's visits, because we all know who he serves. <laughs> yeah. I believe you covered that on INN News as well. Oh, no. While the Biden administration maintains its public posture that they're trying to convince Israel to pursue alternative methods of eliminating Hamas, the recent approval mm -hmm. of a huge amount of military aid to, approve, to Israel shows where Biden's support is actually going. There is no re regard there for Palestinian civilians, only an attempt to convince people that there is. Netanyahu has gotten that message loud and clear. I believe nine billion of the ninety-five billion that has now been appropriated for the Nazis in Ukraine and the ethnic cleansers in Israel, another nine billion is going for humanitarian aid to the Palestinians, which we know Israel will, of course, blow up as soon as it gets into warehouses. Yeah, Rafa is already besieged, a city that was already crowded with two hundred and seventy-five. Thousand inhabitants now has over 1.4 million people crammed into it, and a heat wave is blistering the area. Nobody talks about that. Oh, yeah, no air conditioning anywhere to be found, of course. Israel has continued to bomb residential areas over the past few weeks, though few of those have made, made headlines in the, in, in the United States. In recent days, the frequency of attacks has increased, and every morning I wake up and I see Thanks to Nuno Marquez, go follow Nuno uh, on Twitter. 18 killed 14 children last night. 14, uh, a whole family yeah. eliminated, their house blown up last night by Israel. Not by Hamas, by Israel. And also watch yeah. INN News' segment about Lavender AI and literally the program that's called Where's Daddy? These sick motherfuckers. They're killing, <laughs> yeah. they're killing the people in their homes with their families intentionally. They're making sure they're at home and then dropping a bomb on the house to kill the entire family for generations of people. It's the most insidious. You, it's the most insidious shit I've ever heard. When Israel, <laughs> when Israel launches its attack on Rafah, the civilian death toll, death toll will be off the charts. It's inevitable, given the conditions and the massive overcrowding there. Civilians fleeing the area are also likely to be targeted by Israel, as they have been throughout the assault on the Strip. And remember, we also covered an article about how the IDF cut the Strip in half, and if you went past a certain checkpoint, you were basically just going to be cut down by the IDF. Results of this will undoubtedly be felt throughout the region and, and around the world, and it seems very likely that an Israeli invasion will bring a response from Ansar Allah in Yemen, constantly called, uh, commonly called the Houthis, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and quite likely other militias Hezbollah. throughout the region. No, not Hezbollah, Hezbollah. Hezbollah. Jan Engl Eglin. Hezbollah. Uh, Hezbollah. Yeah. Hezbollah is a little guy. He's hilarious hardcore i wouldn't fuck with hasbullah he's got some fucking friends i would definitely not fuck with his friends. Cap, he's gonna cap kick the shit out of you i'm telling you right now 
Jan, Jan, Jan Eglin, we're almost done, of the Norwegian Refugee Council described what has already happened in Gaza, quote, Gaza has already had a bigger bombardment than even Aleppo, even Raqqa, even Mosul. The attack on Rafa promises to be the worst of all. It seems no government, least of all the one in Washington that has the power to stop it, is willing or able to do anything but watch it happen. And can I get another Richie wake up asshole, please? We need one. Wake up, asshole. Because that's what we need everyone to do right now. Now. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Democracy simply doesn't work. I grabbed this one as well two days ago. And I did not see this anywhere else. People were awfully quiet about this. But Dave DeCamp, antiwar.com, both indie media award honorees. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah. Check out indiemediaawards.substack.com. A list of the best of the best of the best. With all of their links for everyone. Top journalists. Top outlets. Top podcasters and live streamers. Top video creators. They're all listed there. Dave is one of them. Hey, I love that sound. All right. This Hamas official says group is willing to disarm for Uh two-state solution? But of course, we know that Netanyahu said that he's opposed to a Palestinian state in any future scenario. Mm. Maybe, maybe that's why Hamas agreed to it, because they knew there was no way Bibi would. But maybe, just maybe, they actually would. But a two-state solution Mm -hmm. actually means a two-state solution. Water rights, electricity rights, military rights, right of return, right of Free travel, right to issue passports, right to hold elections. Yep. I'm gonna and read just this. Just like the kid can't be can't be trusted with that light socket, you know. That two state solution apparently can't be. I, I can't trust him with that now. You know? Over on I, Facebook, John Ross, happy they birthday, they don't thirty-five. Up. Super happy. You have Uh, lost. Good day, sir. A Hamas political (laughs) official has told the Associated Press that the Palestinian group would be open to a five-year truce with Israel and would disarm and become solely a political party if a Palestinian state was established along the pre-1967 borders. Mm. Speaking in Istanbul, and we know that they'll never agree. That's a nice thought. Speaking in Istanbul, Khalil Al-Haya said Hamas would accept a fully sovereign Palestinian state in the West Bank and Gaza Strip and the return of Palestinian refugees, as you should, in accordance with the international resolutions. He said that Hamas wants to unite with Fatah, which heads the Palestinian Authority and Palestinian Liberation Organization to form a unified government for Gaza and the West Bank. Great success. I believe... Yasser Arafat might have been the last person to run both Fatah and both Palestinian Authority. Mahmoud Abbas is also involved, but a lot of Palestinians don't like and trust him because he's worked heavily with the Israelis and the American government in the past. Yep. I don't... Oh, DJ Comatose, that's a great question, but no, I don't have the the pre-67 borders right now. Um, Anna says no two-state solution. Single state non-secular, all equality, I, I agree with. But this is this is yeah. movement still. All right, Israel is not expected... Oh, okay, so Hamas first sent the signal last week that it might be willing to dissolve its military wing known as al Qusim Brigades, all right, in exchange for a two-state solution. After a meeting with Hamas's political chief, Ismail Hanya, Hanya Turkish foreign minister Hakan Fidan said, the Palestinian group was willing to accept those conditions. What has Israel been willing to give on exactly other than not murdering aid workers and letting slightly more trucks come in to not starve the people of Gaza? Um, Supposedly some poison flour, I think they gave. Yeah. 
Oh no, they shot them while they tried to get flour. That's that. Yes, that was um, called the flour massacre. Yes, Israel is not expected to pursue one, one. any any deal um, that would give the Palestinians a state, as Benjamin Netanyahu has made his Netanyahu has made his opposition to the very to the idea very clear. He has said he wouldn't allow a Palestinian state in any post-war scenario, and has credited himself as the person who prevented a two-state solution in the past. So he's basically admitting... Oh, brother, this guy stinks! He's admitting to having Rabin murdered? Is that what he's basically saying? Yep. Another major impediment to a two-state solution along the 67 borders is the over half a million Israeli settlers who are living in the West Bank right now. Settlers continue to terrorize Palestinians and drive them out of their homes, and the Netanyahu government has explicitly stated it supports settlement expansion with the ultimate goal of annexing the West Bank. And what are you going to do with the Palestinian people that are living there? Uh. Netanyahu has maintained that his goal in Gaza is to eradicate Hamas, even though both Israeli and U.S. intelligence have said that the group isn't going anywhere. al Haya said that mm. Israeli forces have not destroyed more than 20% of Hamas's capabilities, neither human nor in the field. If they can't finish Hamas off, what's the solution? The solution is to go to consensus. Yeah, all of this to eliminate less than 20% of Hamas and their capabilities. In comments to the AP, an advisor to Netanyahu dismissed al Haya and Israel's goals and said that Israel's goals haven't changed, of course. His government set a mission today to destroy Hamas's military and governing capabilities in Gaza. They don't have any governing capabilities because you keep destroying them, free the hostages, which he has no intent of doing, and we've seen why, and ensure that Gaza does not pose a threat to Israel and the rest of the civilized world in the future, the advisor said, those goals will be achieved. Yeah, we'll see. Well, you see know what? That. You know what those solutions sound like? Like maybe a maybe a final one. You know? Um what it sounds like to me. Yeah. You know what? DJ Komoto said that they sent over the uh map. So let me take a look at the at these 67 borders okay here we go uh let me put this up real quick yeah. before we get out of here okay so this one this is from trt world so this was the 1947 the jews got these little pockets that was israel right or this is Right then, UN partition plan of 1947. This was Palestine, 1947. Then, 1947, they gave um, Palestinians Gaza, and I believe that's a part of Lebanon to the north, Golan Heights, maybe. And there's that Syria. Um, and then parts of Jerusalem. But you see much further into Jerusalem. Um, they, that they took away. And now this is what it is today. Gaza went from this to the strip that we have now. Five miles wide, 25 miles long. One and a half million people. are being murdered there.